Hi, in this video we're going to take a closer look at a hypothesis test for one mean. So in this test we are going to use a sample mean and measure it against what we think the population mean should be to determine whether or not we're right about what the population mean should be. So let's get into it. If we are going to conduct a hypothesis test for one mean, the following requirements must be satisfied. Our sample data should be taken from a simple random sample and that sample should be of size at least 30 or the sample must be taken from a population that is known to be normally distributed. If we are sampling from a population that we know to be normally distributed then any sample size is fine for this test. Otherwise we want to stick with a sample of at least 30. The test statistic we use for this hypothesis test depends on what information we have, namely the standard deviation. If the population standard deviation is known, we use the Z statistic. If we only have the standard deviation from our sample, then we use the T statistic. The first case is unlikely. Okay, if we are in a situation where we're going to hypothesize test for a mean, we probably are not going to be privy to the population standard deviation. Okay, so this is an unlikely scenario. So in most cases, we are only going to be privy to our sample's standard deviation, so we are using the T statistic. Now you do not need to memorize this formula, your calculator is going to compute this for you, but this is uh, where the T statistic comes from. Okay, so what we're going to do is look at a couple of examples. Here is our first one. The creators of a new weight loss program claim that the average participant will lose 10 pounds in the first month. A consumer advocacy group believes that the average weight loss is not actually that high. A random sample of 40 people who participated in the program for one month had a mean weight loss of 8.9 pounds with a standard deviation of 4.9 pounds. We are going to use the alpha equals 0 0.05 level of significance to test this claim that the mean weight loss is 10 pounds. Okay, so first thing to notice is we're using a random sample of 40 people, so n is in fact greater than or equal to 30, uh, so that condition is met. Okay, so at this point all we need to do are write down our hypotheses for this test, and then we will use our calculator to compute the uh, test statistic and the p-value and then we will make our decision. Okay, So the claim here is that the average person will lose 10 pounds. The advocacy group believes it's actually going to be lower than that. So our null hypothesis would be that the mean is 10 and the alternate hypothesis would be that the mean is actually less than 10 because they believe that that uh, weight loss cited is actually too high which means they believe it's actually less than 10. So we're going to be doing a left-tailed test here. Okay. Once you've identified your hypotheses, we need to come up with a test statistic. Um, notice all we have here is a sample mean. We have a sample mean of 8.9 pounds, and we have a sample standard deviation of 4.9 pounds. Okay. That data strictly comes from our sample of 40 people. So we are using the T statistic. Okay. So since we are using the T statistic, we are going to go to our calculator. We are going to press stat. We are going to go over to the right to where it says tests. And we are going to go down to the second option, which is the T test. Okay. So if we're doing the hypothesis test for the mean, we are probably going to be using the T test. If you do, for some reason, have the population standard deviation, you would use the z-test. But we are going to use t-test. Okay? And then if you have raw data, you're going to use data, but we do not. We just have the stats. So we're going to go over to stats. And the first input it asks us for is the null mean. So you see where it says mu sub zero? That would be the mean from your null hypothesis, which in our case is 10. Then it wants your sample mean which in our case is 8.9. Then it wants the sample standard deviation, which is 4.9. And then n is the sample size, that would be 40. 
The next line we are asked to choose which kind of test we are doing. Are we doing the two-tailed test? The middle option is a left-tailed test, and the option on the right is the right-tailed test. We are doing a left-tailed test here because our alternate hypothesis is a less than statement. So we want the middle uh, choice highlighted. Okay? And then we will go down to calculate. And we are given the T statistic, which is negative 1.42 approximately. And we have a P value of 0 0.082. So our next step is to compare the p-value to our level of significance. Our level of significance is 0 0.05, so it turns out that our p-value is greater than 0 0.05, which means the appropriate conclusion is to not reject the null. Okay, so what does that mean in this case? So you'll notice that our sample mean was less than 10 pounds, but the question is, is that sample mean statistically significant enough for us to reject the claim that the average participant will lose 10 pounds? And according to our hypothesis test, the answer is no. We do not have significant enough evidence to say that the claim is untrue. Even though our sample mean was smaller than 10, the thing to notice here is this is a pretty large standard deviation. Okay, the standard deviation is 4.9 pounds, which means if we went back and took another sample of 40 people, it's entirely plausible that we find a mean weight loss of more than 10 pounds. Okay, this data is pretty spread out. So with this small of a sample size and that large of a standard deviation, we would need uh, a, a more significant difference from 10 in order for us to reject this hypothesis. Okay, just to give you an idea, if I go back into this t-test, and let's say my sample, let's say everything was the same, except my sample mean was only 8.1 pounds. Okay, so let's say instead of the average being 8.9, let's say it was 8.1. So if I go in there and change that to 8.1, leave everything else alone, look at what kind of p-value we get here. Here we get a p-value of 0 0.009, which is now less than my level of significance. So if that were the case, that would be significant enough for me to reject the claim that the average weight loss is 10. Okay, so there are two factors at play here. There's one factor is how different from the null hypothesis is our sample data. And the second thing is how spread out is our data? How big is that standard deviation? So in our case, with the mean weight loss of 8.9. I'm going to go back in there and fix that so I don't look at the wrong thing. So again, in this case, we are not going to reject the null, which means our conclusion, so we're going to write a conclusion here, okay? Uh, we do not have, we do not have sufficient evidence to reject the claim that the average participant will lose 10 pounds. Okay, so that would be the appropriate conclusion. Or another way we could put that is we do have sufficient evidence to support the claim that the mean weight loss is 10. We could word it that way as well. But, okay, so pretty simple when we can use uh, the t-test on our calculator. Let's try another example. Okay, so we have a soccer coach here that claims that the average player runs three miles during a soccer match. A skeptical fan doesn't believe that this is accurate. So we took a random sample of 45 soccer players. Uh, we had them wear a GPS device during the game, and we found that on average, they ran 3.2 miles with a standard deviation of 0 0.6 miles. At the 5% level of significance, test the claim that the average player runs three miles during a soccer match. Okay, so the null hypothesis here would be that the mean player runs three miles. So mu equals three. For the alternate hypothesis, we have to look at the alternative here. All we're simply told is that a skeptical fan doesn't believe this is true. Okay, We don't have any indication that the fan thinks this is too much or too little. Uh, just the fan doesn't think this is accurate. So based off that, we should use an alternate hypothesis of mu not equal to 3. Okay, so in this case we're going to be doing a two-tailed test. Okay, so the sample size is 45, which means we've met the uh, sample size of 30 condition. 
and we have a sample mean of 3.2 and we have a sample standard deviation of 0 0.6. Again, this is strictly from the sample, which means we are using the t-test again. So my test statistic here is going to be the t-statistic. So I'm going to go back to stat. I'm going to go over to tests. I'm going to go down to the t-test again and I'm going to enter the stats. So the mean from the null hypothesis here is 3, so I'm going to put 3. Next it wants the sample mean, which is 3.2. The sample standard deviation is 0 0.6. The sample size here is 45. And this time I want the left option, the two-tailed test, to be highlighted. So just go to the not equal to and press enter. Okay, so it should look like that. I'm going to calculate. I get a T statistic of 2.236 and my P value here is 0.03. Okay, we compare that to alpha. Alpha is 0 0.05. This is less than 0 0.05, which means in this case we are going to reject the null. Okay, so again, uh, the claim was that the mean was 3. Our sample mean was a little bit higher than that. It was 3.2. And we're trying to determine if that's statistically significant. And because my p-value is less than my alpha value, we would say, yes, that is a significant difference. So we should reject the hypothesis that the average is actually 3. So we are going to reject that. So our conclusion would be that there is sufficient evidence to suggest that the actual average is not exactly three. Okay, so we're going to say that it is not actually three miles. So there you have it. So there's a couple examples of how we conduct a hypothesis test for a mean.